Welcome to The Wellness Effect. Before we jump into our conversation, I'd like to remind you to go ahead and subscribe. In today's episode, we take a look at the topic of living with chronic medication. Our studio guest is a pharmacologist, registered biological scientist, doctoral candidate, and the Secretary General of the South African Society for Basic and Clinical Pharmacology, Hafiza Parker. Welcome, Hafiza. Thank you so much, Seth. It's lovely to be here. It's great to have you. So, Hafiza, it's great to have you here today. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to, you know, study this and um, become what you are today? Um, it was actually during my undergrad. Um, so, all through my undergrad, I spent two years not really knowing what I was going to do with the rest of my life. So, I first thought I wanted to be a medical doctor. Then I thought I wanted to be a physiotherapist. I mean, you know, it goes in your... Um, early teens, yeah. early 20s, late teens, early 20s. Um, and then we did our pharmacology module um, and I actually just fell in love with the science of medicine mm. and um, medication. Amazing. Um, and then I applied for an honours at the University of Pretoria and I've been there pretty much ever since. <laughs> Excellent. And, and what are chronic diseases? So chronic diseases are diseases or health issues that persist um, for an extended period of time. Sure. And they affect millions of people w worldwide. Um, and actually in South Africa now we are seeing an increase in chronic diseases. And I think the um, stats essay I was reading, they named it a looming health threat. So could you tell us the different types of chronic diseases? So your, I think the most prevalent chronic diseases are hypertension, also known as high blood pressure or yes. pressure, um, then diabetes, which is high blood sugar, some people just call it sugar, and then also atherosclerosis, also known as cholesterol. Who is really affected uh, when it comes to chronic diseases? Is it, is it the young? Is it the elderly? Chronic di diseases are often associated with the elderly in our population, but yes. it's not necessarily um, only the elderly that are affected by chronic diseases. So sure. your younger... Um, Young people of any age actually can be affected by chronic disease. So asthma is a chronic disease. Mental health diseases are also chronic diseases that require treatment over prolonged tre um, periods of time or even um, lifelong. Chronic diseases can be influenced by um, anything ranging from your environment, your, like your genetics, mm. um, your lifestyle. Um, so it's important, um, I think, to speak about it. We need to break sure. that stigma. Yeah. Um, that... Having a chronic disease is the end of the world because it, it's not. With the advent of mo modern medication, it's actually become manageable. Mm, and you can live. And you can live, yeah, 100%. So you've mentioned to us um, the different types of chronic diseases, uh, but maybe could you elaborate um, chronic medication uh, and why it's necessary? So chronic medications are prescription medications sure. that are prescribed for an extended period of time. So it can be anywhere from three months to a couple um, of months, to a couple of years, to lifetime. Sure. Okay? Um, and the reason they're important is because they keep the disease from progressing. So sure. they keep it in a stable, a stable state, okay. which helps to improve patient quality of life. So you don't really see those complications um, arising if you regularly take your medication and on time. Um, so if, we, if I could give you some examples. Yes, please do. Um, so with hypertension, you would yes. have, had to have antihypertensives. So these medications keep your blood pressure at a stable level, so it stops the um, extreme spikes and dips mm. um, in your blood pressure. Uh, that would lead to side effects um, and also severe complications such as strokes. Okay. And maybe what piece of advice would you give to individuals who have chronic diseases and are on chronic medication? I think we want people to know that it's not the end of the world. Yes. Like being diagnosed by, with a chronic disease is not, it's not the end of the world. Thanks to modern medication, it is now manageable and treatable. Um, and you can go on with your, your daily life, you know, like normal. Um, I know it can be a bit daunting at first yes. and it can yeah. seem like your body's failing you or something. It's just that you have a biological system um, in which something has gone wrong mm. and you now need to take something to correct it. So, mm. I mean, if you're thirsty, you drink water, you know. Um, in your body, if you have like a, if there's an imbalance of, let's say, in the case of mental disease, um, brain chemicals, you need to 
take something to intervene, to mm. just to rebalance it. Because the whole thing about the body is homeostasis, right? Mm. Keeping things balanced. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these um, diseases, they, they tend to arise when there's an imbalance of something somewhere. Um, or something causing causing that imbalance or that spike or the lack of homeostasis, so to mm. speak. Um, so you you want to get back to that um, mm. balance. So my advice, well, my advice and advice I think of clinicians everywhere um, would be to stay organized. Anything that helps you remember to take your pull, you can even work it into your daily um, routine. So if you know that you need to take your medication um, in the morning, leave it with your breakfast cereal. Or if you know you need to take it in the evening, leave it with your toothbrush. Um, so that, that's just ways that you can remember to take it. And then also because you are on this medication for extended periods of time, keeping that script filled is another responsibility that you have. Okay. Um, so the pharmacy can dispense the medication, but it's your responsibility to pick it up or to arrange for delivery. Um, and make sure that you do that on time so that you don't run out of medication and you don't end up missing a dose, which leads me to my next point. Do not miss doses. Mm. Missing doses, even when you feel fine, it doesn't mean that... Um, your disease has disappeared, it has dissipated. It means that your medication is working, mm. so you should keep taking it. If you do miss a dose, um, or miss a couple of doses now because you think you're feeling okay, like it can actually lead to um, some more severe complications in the long run. So with asthma, for example, if you don't take your medication that you're meant to take um, daily, it can lead to lung remodeling and then can exacerbate the disease and can um, will then mean that you probably will have to take more medication at the end of the day. Don't only take your medication when your symptoms appear. Um, for example, my gran, she had a heart condition, um, my soul rest in peace. But I mean, I remember she had to take a diuretic drug, which is to reduce swelling. And I mean, she was just like, wait for her feet to swell and then take the medication. <laughs> so instead of, she'd be like, oh, I can look at me, look at my feet, they're swelling. I'm going to just quickly go take my pill and then I'm going to pee and it's going to be fine. And I'm like, but if you had taken that medication regularly like you were supposed to, um, your feet wouldn't swell in the first place. Correct. Right. So don't only take the drugs when the symptoms appear. Mm. I think also maybe just be cautious. Mm. Do not borrow medication mm. um, from your neighbor, from your community, from your WhatsApp group. <laughs> um, because um, just because both you and I have hypertension, mm. it doesn't mean that we're on the same drugs. Okay, so you could be, even if we are on the same drug, you could be on a different dosage. Um, and the way that certain medications are um, prescribed yes. can also be based on your genetics, um, your lifestyle. There are certain endocrine diseases that require treatment um, with hormones. Okay, um, so if you and I are on the same medication, yes. Um, those tablets look the same, but yes. they are all at different dosages. So it doesn't mean that because you're on this medication and I'm on this medication that we can share medication. Correct. Um, because that leads to misuse um, of medication, which is which can be quite dangerous. And like if you are taking a dosage that is higher or lower than you are meant to be, it can lead to the side effects of the medication being worse or you don't have any effect at all mm. if you're taking a dose that's too low for you. Rather ask your healthcare provider, Correct. ask your doctor, ask your pharmacist. Like they are there to give you advice. Like if you are confused, rather ask them because they they know better. They've been doing this like a long time. They studied long periods of time to be there for you. Um, I think which then brings me to my next point. Communicate, 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 communicate with your healthcare provider. Um, they are also there for you to ask them questions. So they understand that these are scary conditions like starting any long-term medication is daunting even for someone like me mm. it's something that i have to think about you know you go and do the research i mean or, and i ask my doctor i phone my doctor you know that these are things that we do you have you have to um like ask the right people to in to avoid misinformation mm. and then also the spread of misinformation because i think that's a little bit more dangerous um we saw that with coronavirus, yes. um, everybody had an opinion and and like phew, sometimes the information that came out was just a bit 
prof. very out there. And yeah. I think like as academics, as professionals, as clinicians, like it's, it's our responsibility to stop the spread of misinformation because mm -hmm. we know better. How important is, you know, seeking support? So, like we said, it, it can be an emotional time, mm. and like oftentimes it is. Um, so, seeking support is important. For example, um, there are um, support groups for conditions like autoimmune diseases, such as lupus. So, there's support groups where you can go and share your experiences um, with people who, who are experiencing similar emotions to you, so they can relate to you on that level. Um, also, you should involve your family yes. so that they know what's going on with, with you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes okay, a lot like, of sense. So if, if your family is informed, so let's say you get diagnosed with asthma, um, and for asthma, there are two pumps, okay, usually, maybe three. Um, so there's one that you need to take in an emergency. Correct. Okay, so when you're having an asthma attack, your the people around you need to know which pump to get to you if you are debilitated Correct. and cannot do that for yourself. Um, so I think also in informing your co-workers. Mm. Um, I think as South Africans, we, we are an accepting nation. Like we are known for breaking stigmas. I think let's break the stigmas around, you know, I need to take medication. I'm too young to take medication. Mm. You know, I'm too young to have a chronic disease. There's no such thing. I mean, we all at school, um, if you're on a sports team, there was the kid that needed the pump that was with the coach, you know, like let us break those stigmas. It's mm. the same with mental health diseases. Like these are chronic conditions requiring medication to stabilize an instability. Correct. I mean, let us be accepting of it. Let us talk about it in the workplace. Let us talk about it at home. Um, uh, and yeah, but like I'm here to say that if it, it's it's not the end of the world. Mm. These med like these conditions are manageable with medication. Mm. If something is not working for you, communicate. Yeah. Um, so, for example, let's say you're struggling to take your medication on a daily basis. You're not somebody who remembers the pill reminders are not working, the apps are not working, um, and you have to take an oral contraceptive, for example, which requires you to take it every day at the same time. Um, if you discuss that with your healthcare provider, they can maybe recommend an alternative type of medication. Correct. So you get the patch that you have to apply once a week or the injection that you can take once a month. So having these conversations is important. Like And be, being able to admit that like I cannot manage this or this is affecting me like this. Um, and then the last piece of advice that I have is to keep a list of your medications handy. Even if you have a list on your phone, a, a picture that you've taken of a list that, that you've written, um, if you're not sure, ask your doctor to help you curate this list. Because when you then go to, to another doctor, let's yes. say, for example, for another condition, they don't know which medications you are taking. Um, and so, like, they can prescribe, because there are things that, like, drug-drug interactions that exist. Right. We also have drug-food interactions that exist. So... Um, if you have that curated list with you all the time, I mean, it can help your doctor to make a better, you know, informed decision. Even your pharmacist, when you go to the pharmacy for over-the-counter medications, if they know which chronic medications you are on, it's easier for them to, to give you some, to dispense something over-the-counter. Um, so that, bearing in mind, though, that that list should include even over the over-the-counter things that you're that you are receiving, mm. even your vitamins, your minerals, your herbal supplements that you are taking, your um, traditional remedies that you are yes, taking. Because great. I mean, we are a rainbow nation. Yes, thank and we, you. like we take, um, we still believe in our traditional home remedies, yes. but that it can play a role in the medications that you are taking and that you have to take regularly. So Afisa, that was a really great conversation, uh, quite insightful, and uh, thanks for the actionable steps that our viewers can take into their day-to-day -day life. Thank you so much, Seth, and it was lovely to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Remember to subscribe to our channel and make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. I'll see you next time on The Wellness Effect. BankMed, the medical scheme of choice for the financial services industry. The Wellness Effect is proudly brought to you by BankMed, yours in good health.